but he's going to talk a little trash after. He is a fierce competitor and loves to get after it. Purdue just beat number one. That means they are number one again. Back at the top of the pole and back on their home court in the final game before Christmas. The Boilermakers have scored 87 plus points five games in a row. This offense absolutely rolling right now. Ray Kaufman ran into the post, has it tapped back out in recovery with 10 on the clock. And a flat footed three goes down. How about that? And they're not going to guard you. you got to knock it down, Trey Kaufman. Ren didn't start the season the way he had hoped to, but he's really starting to figure it out over the last couple of games. He's going to have a lot of open shots this conference season. Just got to have the confidence to knock it down. Just his fifth three of the year to open up the scoring for Purdue. And Trey Kaufman ran from out deep. Here's McCray, the top scorer for Jacksonville, and he gets it past the big hands of Zach Eady. And that's Robert McCray's deal. He likes to get downhill, whether it's to his right hand or to his left hand. He's a state champion, high jump winner. So when he gets in that paint, he's elevating to go finish over. If you're Braden Smith, you've got to keep that basketball out the lane and not let that be so easy. A 42-inch vertical. That's insane, man. It's up there in, like, Kobe range, <laughs> Nate Robinson range. Here's the first foul. Rivers called for the foul. Chance at moving up the Big Ten all-time wins list today with the win against Arizona. Matt Painter tied Lou Henson. He can pass the guy whose camps he went to as a kid. That he is wins crazy. today. And you think about it, and I used to question what Coach Painter wanted to do on a defensive end. That's sick, right? And a lawyer no, and Trey Kaufman ran with all five for Purdue. That's a really good drive by Fletcher Lawyer. Playing off of a closeout, getting to the basket. Last season, settled too much from the three-point line. But you saw it last game. Getting to the basket, making something happen, and then Trey Kaufman ran with the cleanup around the basket. You know, that's what he's done a lot of times this year. Simple job, he says, opposite of Edie. Braden Smith looking for guys coming with him. Leaves it for Lance Jones. Really good pass by Brandon Smith. Slowing down in transition, having a pace about himself, knowing Lance Jones is sprinting full court. A nice little drop off to Lance Jones. And Jones right in the pocket of Nye Black. Almost had another one going the other way. McCray, short on it. Offensive rebound for Pruitt. Wide open look, and it goes down for three for Cook. That is Jarius Cook's deal. Coming into this game, he made 28 field goals. 21 of them have been three-pointers. When he's shooting the ball from three, he can cash it in. Ooh. Lawyer stays out. The guards for Purdue were just in complete control in most of that game on Saturday in Indy. They were big time. Like 53 points combined, 20 or 33 from the field, made nine threes. And you think about going to that game, if you would have told a Purdue fan, you beat the number one team in the country and Zach Eadie's your third leading scorer. I don't know how they feel about it, but those two guards, they really showed up. He still had 22. <laughs> he still did all right for himself. Still had eight in a row in the second half. And McCray called for that reach on Smith, who's holding his ear. All right, he's good. He's good. All right, Jordan Mincy has not brought a team here as a coach, but he knows the history in this place. Of course he does. He said it's going to be crazy down there floor level for the first time. And he was looking around the gym during shoot around asking me how loud it got in here. And I had to tell coach, it's loud no matter if it's Christmas break or you're playing a conference game. It does not matter. These fans care about Purdue basketball. He said he really learned that when he was an assistant at Florida. Jordan Mincy was... Brought that team to Michigan State. Yep. It's December. Nobody's going to be in the gym, right? No. Sure. Big Ten fans proved him wrong. And Jossie Powell gives up. Getting late clock for Jacksonville. And McCray with a hot pass, and Jones has the steal. Got Kaufman run, running with him. Instead, it's Smith. And back into Kaufman run. Seven points for him. It's a good extra pass by Fletcher Lawyer. Giving up a good shot for a better one. Trey Kaufman ran extremely aggressive in this game early. Made a three. Got a put back at the rim. Now it's getting to that right-hand turnaround. Scott can score the ball. He can have a season high before the first media. He's getting there. He is getting there. A mid-range hit for Jossie Powell. Ray Feld, that is not a guy that is scared to get up his shot. 
when he comes into the game. Jossie Powell understands that he is a shooter. Shot the ball 41% from deep last season. Struggling from deep this year, but that ball is going up. He has a fluorescent green light from close to three. Or a, a gold medal type shot, right? <laughs> That's what Jacksonville calls it. They rate it by medals, yep. like the Olympics. Open threes, they got to go up, just like that one. Lance Jones from outside. I don't know if there's a guy that is enjoying this season more than oh, Lance Jones. He reminds me so much of John Noctius. I played with John Noctius to transfer in in the 2015 season. He just was so happy to be here, so happy to be the part of the culture, do things the right way. You can tell Lance Jones just loves being a Boilermaker. He's falling in love with it. Bray in the traffic, Smith away with it. And the guy that loves being a Boilermaker up ahead for the dunk. A great lead out pass by Braden Smith, but Lance Jones has just brought an edge to Purdue. He brings toughness on the defensive end. He's not scared. He's going to talk trash. Offensively, he takes a few bad ones, but you can live with him. Oh, that is a, a ridiculous shot for Nye Black. It's a good move by Nye Black. Getting downhill, getting to that right hand. He does not shoot a bunch of threes. His deal is getting to that basket, getting to the free throw line, and Purdue's got to keep him out of the paint. He was on quadruple double watch in their last game. Busy, busy day. And good, good luck defending that. Lance Jones running out for Purdue. Purdue turning defense into offense. Brandon Smith getting the steal. Lance Jones getting out and running. Go hang on that rim, young fella. Conference if it's early season. Purdue fans know basketball. They know what playing hard looks like. And they appreciate it. And you just got to love being a Boilermaker in these moments. Seven apiece, seven points apiece for Jones and Kaufman Red, and now Zach Eady scores. It is and it was inevitable that he was going to have one of those and probably do it several times today. It's a great execution off the imbalance play. You saw PJ taking that play over with the guys early and shoot around. Just great execution coming back from the timeout. Lawyer checking Powell, who loves to shoot and passing here off Morton out of bounds with seven on the shot clock. This game is a really good game for Braden Smith or for Fletcher Lawyer when you're checking guys like Nye Black, Powell, or Robert McCray, guys that like to handle the basketball, get in the lane, and make plays. It's really going to help these guys progress as the season goes on. Late clock and a step on the sideline for McCray. We have Matt Painter over there playing a little defense on him. Coach getting in the way. Four turnovers for Jacksonville and what's been a clean game for Matt Painter's offense. I mean, obviously a, a very up and down game getting into the, the 90s and the 80s against Arizona. It was just a joy to watch the ball popping around in that game at Indy the other day. And that's the difference about this team from last year, Connor. This team can get up and down. They're not fearful of getting in the track beat your team. Arizona wanted to try and run Purdue out of the game, but Brandon Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, Lance Jones, their speed and athleticism kept them in it. We've got to go here. Ethan Morton. Ooh, that would have been his first make in a long time. Good pass. A good pass from McCray. Edie recovered on it, and good luck getting it over the top of that, that if you're paying. You gotta make those if you're paying. Really good pass and traffic by McCray. Jacksonville, they gotta come away with those bunnies. They wanna have a chance to compete in this one. Gillis fills it up. You just know what you're gonna get out of Mason Gillis. He's gonna play hard, he's gonna rebound, he's gonna defend and be a leader, and he's gonna knock down open three, shooting it above 50% from three this season. Turn around for McCray. He's got a lot of game, Rainbow. A lot of game. A true three-level score. Can get to the basket. You see him right there playing in the mid-range. 35% from three. This is a high-level player. Does not matter where he's playing that. This guy can go with the best of them. It shouldn't be surprising that you see a little pressure from Jacksonville. And that's what you got to do. You got to pressure Purdue and force turnovers. Late clock again. Quick closeout from Powell. And the lawyer ran into some trouble. Gillis, oh, he got pushed. Yeah, he was, McCray was right on him. McCray, be, McCray bailed him out. McCray does a really good job of getting into the lane and probing, not being in a rush, having really good pace about himself, understanding that Mason Gillis is a bigger defender, gets to his turnaround, uses the footwork, with a nice soft floater with his left hand. 
having that pace has really helped Robert McCray's game this season. And they got into some foul trouble in their last game, a 14-point comeback win against Louisiana Monroe. That's what they were missing when he was sitting on the bench like he will now. When you're dependent on a guy like Jackson Villa and Robert McCray, he can't afford to be in foul trouble. He's got to play physical without his hands. That foul right there on Mason Gillis was not needed. He's just got to force Mason Gillis to a tough pull up. When Jordan Mincy said, oh, hold up here, Gillis, Gillis just went down at, at half court holding his ankle. Stepped on the foot of Zach Bell. Those hurt. Those small tweaks, those hurt. Mm. See that left ankle just tweak a little bit. And some history with that ankle, of course. It's the same ankle he hurt in Toronto. In that Alabama game two yep. games ago for Purdue. There's one dude on Purdue's roster that's going to tough through an injury. It's Mason Gates. You almost expect him to come up with like a black eye or some sort of floor burn. He's going to stay in here. Well, that was almost a, a bank three, but it wouldn't sit down for Pruitt. Guy that's one for 13 on the season from three. Coach loves Pruitt's toughness. His toughness, his edge, his rebounding. A tough guy don't get it done in conference play. And Caleb first in here, skips it out for Jones. Gillis just came up with that ankle out to Jones. Gonna miss three. It's good defense from Jacksonville. Kept the ball out of the paint, didn't allow driving lanes, and forced a three at the end. And this is where Pruitt's more comfortable in tight. Yep. That's where Pruitt makes his money. Getting in the lane, finishing at the basket. Tough physical at 6'8, 230. Has the size and strength. This is a grown man when he's at the basket. Did a great job finishing through Caleb first. And there is no question that his biggest strength. His biceps and his, and his deltoids. <laughs> For sure. He Good gets boy. the assignment on first. Who's doubled and goes up anyway and scores the easy bucket. Caleb, Caleb first with a great job of spinning baseline, getting to that left hand and having the patience to go up and finish over the side. And Nye Black with the sweeping Ooh. cross. That is disgusting. That is a nasty move, Nye Black. Getting into his bag with that one, going across the lane off of the ball screen, snaking it to get to the middle, and then the left hand finish on the right side. That was nasty. Turn. He doesn't care where he's playing. It can be a Juco gym, it can be right here at Mackey. It could be the park with fifth graders. Nye Black is going to give his all. You know, Pruitt with the baseball has pass ahead to Cook. He's short on it. And Morton had the inside position with first there with him. And that's a good decision by Ethan Morton. Not running out to Jarius Cook, knowing that he loves that transition three. He stayed back and guarded the basket. Good drive. Lance Jones gets to the basket. Nice cradle for Jones, huh? Lance Jones gets Purdue a guard on the perimeter outside of Brandon Smith that can break the defense down, get into the teeth of the defense, and finish for himself and make plays for others. It's a great pickup in the offseason by Coach Payne. Already has as many points as he had in Indy on Saturday. Nine points. That's off. Jones the rebound. Jones attacking short with the left. And oh, he out of there. He walked with it. He has a, a very comfortable handle, but he got caught traveling there. Les Jones has been outstanding this season. He brings the energy. He brings the effort. He has been a big time player. Ball season ticket salesman, <laughs> Rafael Davis. I appreciate everybody that answered the phone and everybody that did not hang up on me after we finished last place in the Big Ten. You tell me that story. I couldn't believe it. Oh, man, it was a tough. It was tough going. I mean, 2013-2014, I mean, I know fans remember that year. Just 10 years ago, Purdue finished last place in the Big Ten, last game of the season against Northwestern. Travis Carroll's giving a senior night speech. Fans are walking out. That next summer, I did an internship with the John Purdue Club selling season tickets. I don't think I sold one all season, all summer long. It was a tough going. You, you remember the names of the people that hung up <laughs> yes, on Yes, I you. do. I'll never forget. I bet they are Purdue fans now. And check on Heidi. Did, did you ever follow up and ask if they ever bought season tickets? You know what? I did the same internship the following summer, and we sold out season tickets. And they're Caleb, like, oh, I, you don't need to call me. I already got them. <laughs> Caleb Swanigan commits to Purdue. We went back to the tournament. 
everything has been up since. I love what Coach Painter has done with the program. He went from recruiting guys a certain way to recruiting guys that he wanted, guys about character, substance, wanted to be a Purdue, and it's working out for him. Well, guys like Hoffman, Wren, and Jones who have had big starts to combine 16 points for these two guys. Jones can't add on. And that just speaks to the depth of this team. You look at that Arizona, Arizona game, it was such a lawyer, Brandon Smith from Showtime. Here comes Colvin, and Nye Black stopped Showtime with the foul. And with tonight's State Farm State of Success, you got the two winningest programs on the air tonight as far as Big Ten championships. Purdue with 25, going for back-to-back. -back. This is just big time. When I look at this list and I see this, and I see Purdue sitting at 25, I always think back to the season we were just talking about. Since then, they've won three Big Ten championships. It's been just amazing to see Purdue being one of the better teams in the conference. It's been since the three-peat in the mid-90s that Purdue has gone back-to-back -back in the Big Ten. And you know he used to remind us of the three-peat all the time? The guy standing up over on the bench, Coach Brandon Brantley. He'd come in the locker room when he first got the job and say, Ray, I got three of those things. So oh, yeah. <laughs> he was a captain on that 96 team. There you go, yep. That big dog and big cat. <laughs> the cat's still around, right? <laughs> Jacksonville. Good move. Really good move. With McCray, he can really, really play. He just does a really good job of probing the defense and taking his time and not being in a rush. Coming off of that ball screen, calling for it again, and just getting downhill, getting to the shot he wants. Purdue's got to do a better job of keeping him in front and staying attached to his body. And more of this will be on him because Nye Black, his backcourt mate, has two fouls. He's on the bench right now. First with a size advantage. Kick out three. And it's short for Heidi, but he follows his own. And the arrow's going back to Jacksonville on the tie-up from Cook. It's a great job by Jerry's Cook getting in there and trying to dig that basketball out. Seeing Cam Heidi crashing the glass with that offensive rebound, just coming to dig it out. The Cook going to the bench, a very intense defender. You see him when he gets into guys' shorts. Clapping, yep. just just daring them to attack him on the dribble. Hey, you don't normally see that out of guys that are known as shooters. Guys that are known as to shoot the ball from deep. But Cook is a guy. He likes to talk some trash. He likes to be physical. He wants to get up in you and make you feel him. And Coach loves him for that. This is a big possession for Jacksonville. Expect something from McCray getting down here. He's got Smith on him with Rivers out to set the screen, and that's off the foot of somebody. He hit Edie's foot. Jacksonville stays with it and threw it as a second three of the year. It was a really good pass by Zach Bell. Zach Bell comes up with that 50-50 ball, drives it, draws the defender, and finds Pruitt for the corner three knockdown. And Pruitt and Edie battling underneath. So Purdue looking ahead to Big Ten play, going for back-to-back -back titles since those titles that Coach Brandon Brantley was reminding, but... You think back to when he was at No Gel Eastern's high school yep. up at Evanston, and Lance Jones was a power forward. <laughs> as hard as that is to believe. That is sick. You can tell Lance Jones just loves basketball. He loves basketball, loves being around the game. He loves his teammates, and he's putting the effort. And he's worked on his game, you can tell. Uh, Kaufman Wren doing some cleanup work, but two shots at the rim, nothing doing. And just one more thing about Lance Jones. We've seen him against Arizona. He guards Caleb Love. I mean, Caleb Love one play. Petty Larson the next one. Colin Boswell the next play. It's a versatile defender. Powell. And a oh. follow-up for Payne. Get up, young fella. Thought you were about to knock me out of my chair. <laughs> Whoa. Jacksonville has got to continue to find ways to steal baskets. Rather, if it's turning turnovers into points, hitting the offensive glass, getting second-chance baskets, they've got to mix this game up and steal some baskets and not let this turn into a half-court battle. You can tell the confidence is returning for Stephon Payne. He was benched earlier in the season. Starting to make more plays like that. Short, and the rebound is there for the confident Payne. McCray, tight dribble, no, ED rebound. I just love how McCray has an innate ability to get to that right-hand floater being a lefty. Good shot. Colvin smacks a three. 
That is a big shot from Miles Colvin. Miles Colvin started out this season unbelievable from three-point line. Started nine from 14, but he struggled late. Just one of his last six from deep. And a timeout for Jacksonville. So Stephon Payne following up this myth. Why do you think Jordan Mincy took that timeout? Just let his team know that we're still in this game. We're only down 10. There's six minutes to go in the half. If we get a basket here, we feel really good about ourselves getting it down to eight. I think he just drew up a set play, getting Nye Black back into this basketball game. Back on the floor after sitting with the two fouls several minutes ago. And that is absolutely swallowed up. Zach Eady with the block on Nye Black. And lawyer, no. And wrestle for the ball. Edie gets it back, but Powell's there to strip. That's going up. And it's not going down, but an offensive rebound for Powell. Out for a three. And Pruitt chasing down another one. And that's off him. Knight Black checks back into this basketball game on a design play. He drives it into a tree. Zach Eady sends that to the first row. It's a really good block by Zach Eady, being able to go up and contest, get the block without beat, without fouling. That's the next level of Nye Black not being scared coming into this game. Yep. And the thing about it is, Nye Black is going to drive that basketball again right into Zach Eady's chest. He does not care about if it goes in or if it gets blocked. He's going to play the same way. Well, Payne is in there on Eady. Good D. And tapped into the hands of Colvin, but he lost it. Powell takes it right back. Cook. Ooh, air ball. And no rim, so no shot clock reset, and Pruitt gets it out. And then tapped from behind by Smith with five on the clock. So you're just saying, and Night Black's going to go right back in there, and he did. Night Black does not care. There's one player on this floor that's not scared of Zach Eady. It's Night Black, who happens to be the smallest player on Jacksonville that's playing right now. He can finish at the rim. He has the size and the strength. He can get himself to the free throw line, and he's just no chump. Cook's been looking for his, and that was influenced by Edie, but followed by Payne. And when Zach Edie comes over to contest that shot, that is when Trey Kaufman Wren has to come down and crack and hit somebody. Zach Edie's going to contest. Someone's got to have his back and have that backside rebound. Edie's been held to two points. Kaufman Wren has not. A smooth nine points for Kaufman Wren. Seven coming before the first break. To show the depth of this Purdue team. They got different guys that can beat you on any given night. Good defense. One more. Colvin was trying. Nye Black coming around. Now you get the one more. In and out, Lawyer. Kaufman Wren keeps it alive. Ooh. Second time for Colvin from three. Best time to shoot a three is off of an offensive rebound. Trey Kaufman Wren does a great job battling on the glass, getting that offensive rebound, and then not forcing the basketball up, not being the black hole. I understand he has shooters all around him. Finds Miles my, my Colvin from the top of the key knockdown. How about Edie not being a black hole against Arizona? Five assists? Big time. Trey Kaufman ran is fighting on the glass, goes up, gets this offensive rebound, and then Miles Colvin knocks it in from three. The young fella is hooping right now. On this game, seven points on the offensive end, but those are the mental errors that freshmen have to fight through. You gotta understand, be to the basketball, you cannot be hugged up, and you've gotta crack down when that shot goes up. Said like a true defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. <laughs> one that started out as a bad one, I tell you. Ray Paul Davis, Connor Onion. So he blocked out somebody, just the wrong somebody. <laughs> just the wrong somebody. And Colton not on the floor here as Jones goes into Edie. I'll give it back to him. There you go. Right back to him. Crowd coming. Didn't matter. Four points for Edie in this first half. Whenever you can see that number 15 clear or you can see Zach Edie's hands, you got to give him the basketball and let that big fella eat. Well, Jacksonville got to this point only allowing the one field goal for Edie. Had to feel pretty good about that if you're yep. the Dolphins. 
Today, Big Ten Plus delivers thousands of non-televised live events. Access to next day on-demand replays, multi-view to watch up to four games at once, and a 24-7 channel. There's no plus like home. Subscribe and stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big10Plus.com. Be a good Christmas gift. And Smith tapped from behind, Powell away with it. Good defense from Zach Bell getting that tip back. With Bell and Cook on the floor together. And at this tandem at guard move. just back and off the stop at the rim on Edie. But Purdue survives it. It's a really good move from Zach Bell. And then Jones going to the free throw line. And that's what Lance Jones brings to this team. He brings a quickness and athleticism, a guy that can get out on a break and go finish in transition. Last season, it was too much half-court basketball. This season, they are getting out and running. Braden Smith with the kick ahead. Lance Jones with the quickness and the toughness to go get that basketball up on the glass. It's plays like that that make you wonder how he was a power forward in high school. <laughs> For sure. So the, the high school team he played on, they went to the Illinois State Finals. They played in the State Final Four. And it was a bunch of guys that were about the same height as Jones. I bet. So kind of positionless. I bet. But just think, if your power forward has to guard Lance Jones, right. the ball skills, the quickness, that's tough. Tough in both ways. And he, and he probably had the toughness and the grit to guard a power forward on the other end. I remember talking to Lance early in his career, and he was like, oh, yeah, I was doing up and under moves. <laughs> it's nothing like what you're seeing from me now as a guard. That is funny. And Purdue is defended without fouling in this first half. Just one team foul. We dip inside two and a half minutes, and of course there is number two. And that's one of Coach Painter's staples. Being physical without fouling, defending without reaching, contesting without bringing your hands down. He really taught, he really teaches how to play defense without fouling and send the teams to the free throw line. But it's strength against strength in that way in this game today. The problem for Jacksonville, they get here a lot, they don't make a lot. Yep. If they miss this second one, we get some chicken. For chicken. Ah, no chicken. There is nothing better. That doesn't matter if it's students in here or alums. Everyone wants some free food. Good pass. Wide open. Good pass. And a foul will keep it down here. And Purdue's into the bonus, shooting a one and one. But Purdue has been so much better this season against the press. Yeah, they're playing with two guards, two traditional point guards. You think of Lance Jones and Braden Smith. But Fletcher Lawyer's ability to get that basketball to the middle of the floor and then find Mason Gillis in the corner, that's just good basketball. They didn't panic. They didn't rush. They found the middle. They looked opposite. And that's exactly how you want to break a press. And he earns the second. Not surprising the Boilermakers at their shoot-around, they do a, a free-throw shooting contest at the end. Zach Eady kicked everybody's butt. <laughs> yes, he did. Even the guards. <laughs> he just puts in so much work at it. I mean, if I was a guard on that team and Isaac Haas would have won a free-throw contest, we might have jumped big Isaac. But Zach Eady, he gets, he gets it going at the free-throw line. He puts a lot of time in his game. He comes in the gym early. You saw him today before a shoot-around. He's a workhorse. This is a, didn't just happen. Where did Lance Jones come from? Ooh. You saw the big smile from him in Indy as McCray back to the rim. But Jones, at the end of that Arizona game, he's orchestrating the crowd. He's saying, yep. come on. He Get back it. up. We knew we just sealed this. Yep, he and he was two for nine in that game. It doesn't matter if he's scoring the basketball, if he's helping win. He just loves to be a part of this team. Good pass. Nice dish from Edie, but Smith can't finish. There's some of that passing that showed up for Edie on Saturday. And McCray's been the guy most of this first half for Jacksonville. And tough angle, and it's down to Edie. It's a good shot from McCray. He can make that. He can get, got a defender on his hip, clear eye to the basket. That's a shot he's got to take, a shot that's going to go down for him. Dude, you're right, Ray Bell. He gets to that right really well as a lefty. Rebound for Payne off the lawyer miss. 
And the Jacksonville has played three of these high major games this season. They've been blown out in all of them. And trying to get a touch closer to Powell, short, rebound Jones. And the shot clock is still on. They can take the time, though. This is Purdue Stable. Brady Smith coming to his right hand off of the ball screen. You see Jarius Cook. He already understands what's going on, trying to read the play. This is his deal. Cook. Whip across the court. Jones short. Now the clock is off. Last chance for Jacksonville. Powell looking for runners. McCray. And way too heavy on it, and that brings us to halftime. Trey Kaufman Wren got the party started with a three, and Lance Jones joined him. Lance Those were Jones, two of the top guys. Lance Jones was big time in this first half. 13 points in the half, got out of transition. Kaufman Wren had his way. Miles Colbert made this season, and it's good to see these guys come in and have energy and play the game the right way. Because you see, a Miles Colbert, he was here two hours before Jacksonville shoot around, getting his shots up, so he was ready for this moment. And so were you. I was early in the gym. <laughs> Started the second half, final game before a little Christmas break for Purdue and Jacksonville. As Purdue tries to stay undefeated in non-conference, and Smith with a good beginning. Jacksonville starts the second half in a little bit of a zone look. Trey Kaufman Rand sets a great elbow screen to get Braden Smith to that right hand where he loves it and get to that elbow pull up. They call Jones took a little shot to the face on the way down there. So. Offensive foul. And the Rivers in the high post on Edie. What's that feel like? You, you get clocked in the face, and then you got to get back in a stance and guard the point guard. Oh, man, that's an unbelievable feeling. I can remember being getting well, you hit like the, that? <laughs> no, unbelievably bad oh. feeling. I got hit in the face one time. My tooth went through my lip and still had to continue on playing the game. During the game, went to the locker room, got a little, got stitched up, and had to go back and play the game. It, it's, it, you've got to be a warrior when you're playing in the Big Ten. I want to know if there are pictures of that. <laughs> Hook shot, ED, no roll. Kaufman Wren couldn't keep it alive. This picture is the scar on my lips. <laughs> Forever with you. Pretty gross. Thanks for blessing us with that. Here's Cook, baseline drive. Really good pass. No Rivers. Tapped out Jones. Lawyers up ahead. Oh, he fumbled it. And Rivers recovers. Good defense from Rivers. Not giving up on the play. Not just expecting Fletcher Lawyer to make that. And a little casual, and Smith away with the air ball. Edie on Rivers, quick turn, foul and one. Great feed by Lance Jones, getting that basketball to the block in the paint. You see Lance Jones looking at Fletcher Lawyer, that's not a good finish, but Lance Jones finds the big fella, finds his hands, and Zach Edie, one of the best in the country at going up and finishing through contact. And Donovan Rivers has four fouls. Top post player for Jacksonville. And I, I love what Lance Jones did to Fletcher Lawyer right there. Went up to him, told him to lock in, told him to focus up. And that's what you need from your fifth-year senior guy. You need someone where you're up 20, up 25. It does not matter. Play the game the right way. We learned that against Alabama. Fletcher Lawyer is good with his guys yelling at him. Yes, he is. <laughs> Braden Smith yelled at him during that game in Toronto a couple weeks ago. Turned around, had 27 against the number one team in the country. He, he was very reasonable about it, too. As Edie is fouled. Yeah, in that game up in Toronto, Braden Smith went up to Fletcher Lawyer in a heated moment and gave it to him a little bit. And he later said, I understand. I understand. You want to win, Braden. You can yell at me all you want. Now, now that's what you need from your guys. You need that from you need that from your leaders. You need that from your peers on the floor. I can remember getting in Vince Edwards' grill, getting in PJ Thompson's grill, John Nakis, just wanting more out of your guys because you know, as a teammate, they can give you more, and you understand when they need that push. And guys like Lewis Jackson showed me that way. You can see Braden Smith is just carrying that on. Well, for Jacksonville. They had to be saying, uh-oh, when the first shot of this game went down. Trey Kaufman ran a hit. And that opened the gates for Kaufman, Wren, Jones, and Colvin to be the top guys for Purdue in the first half. But Smith and Edie getting going in the second half. With Purdue already stretching out a big lead. Turn in the corner, 
Bell hanging short. Rebound for Kaufman Red. Bell's had a few times where he's gotten in the lane, just either missed the bunny or made a great drop off, and Jacksonville didn't get anything from it. As this season progresses, they've got to finish those bunnies, and the big fellas have got to be more available. Open lawyer. It's a three. That skip pass is going to be there. The defense is sagging in on Zach E. They're so worried about the 7-4 big man in the post, sending two, three guys at him. That kick, that kicks the skip pass is going to be there every time. So the Dolphins take a timeout with that free throw. Zach Eady to ninth in program history. Passing Walt. Kenzie Holmes is Big Ten women's basketball's version of Zach Eady. One of, the, one of the best picks in the country. Oh, I could definitely say that. I definitely feel that. But Kenzie Holmes is a baller. I love watching her play ball. The rivalry goes out of the window. Everything goes out of the window. You love good basketball. And a 10-0 run for Purdue, forcing the Jacksonville timeout. And they can't stop it with the three for Powell. But Purdue, five straight games where they've been flirting with 90 points. They'll look headed there again today. They'll get a second chance with Jones. Into Edie taking over the second half. Got Rivers to the bench with four fouls, and he tags a foul on Pruitt. When you're guarding Purdue, if you're Jacksonville and you're Robert McCray, you got to heat that basketball up. you got to get in the Fletcher lawyer and make him feel you defensively. Have active hands, but you cannot let that be such an easy post feed. If you let Purdue have easy post feeds, let the guards be comfortable, they're going to pick you apart all night long. you got to be physical with their guards. Kaufman Wren was surprisingly open. Kaufman Wren is just doing a great job of finding space on the floor, finding where he can be open, find spots on the floor where he can be successful, and then also just rebounding out of his area tonight. He had a look like there's somebody <laughs> on my shoulder, right? I gotta show somebody. So double digits for Kaufman Wren, one shy of his season high, and there's Powell with the little floater. And that's what Jacksonville's got to do more of. Break the defense down, get into the lane, and get to that mid-range jumper. He slipped out of the hands of Smith. Kaufman runs right there. Good pass. Lawyer attacks the closeout. Kaufman runs. Some really good passes on that trip. Just really good ball movement. Started with Lawyer passing one up to get Jones, and Jones passing his drive up to find Lawyer, and then Lawyer having the patience and the poise, drive the basketball into the teeth of the defense, and then finding Kaufman Wren. And now he has a steal. He's got his running mate with him. And the passing continues on this trip. Oh, Jones couldn't pay it off. It's good basketball to transition by the Boilermakers. Jones went over to help Powell as Jones recovered. The nine on the shot clock. Kaufman runs right there to contest an air ball. Powell and one. Well, the ball's touching a lot of hands in the half court for Purdue. Into space from Lawyer to Kaufman Wren. And Purdue extends it from the second half. On the bench where Ethan Moore was scoring 30 against Ohio State and one of the top teams in the country with the spinning layup. I know Purdue fans remember that. Ethan Moore does not get the credit he deserves, but he is for sure one of Coach Painter's best players ever. So there's an, ooh, how did that happen? Heidi and Edie just scored an own goal. And now the pressure for Jacksonville, that'll be Purdue ball though. And there's Cook in the backcourt. Yeah, that's, that's off Heidi. Payne's there, he'll get the credit for the basket. Kim Heidi does a great job at coming to get the basketball. Just two hands on the ball. If you're Coach Painter, you can be okay with something like that happening. Two guys going after a rebound, just playing hard. To your to your duo point, there's there's a nostalgia factor to why you have each one more up at the top. Oh, no, for sure. Because I can remember every point of those 38. Each one more was one of the main reasons I committed to play for the Gillis hits his second three of the game. If, if we were to, to pull some alums that came after you, how many do you think would say, I committed to Purdue because of Ray Paul Davis? Oh, man, none. None? <laughs> but you know what I will say. I will say, 
AJ Hammonds and I were AAU teammates, and if I don't come to Purdue, AJ doesn't come to Purdue. And if AJ okay, so doesn't one. come, then you don't get Biggie. And if Biggie doesn't come, I mean, if Isaac doesn't come, you don't get Biggie. Biggie doesn't come, you don't get Big Time. Oh, Heidi upstairs. Throw it up, Brandon Smith. Cam Heidi going to finish in the, with at the rim. And that's what Cam Heidi brings to this team. Red shirt freshman, can finish at the rim, can get out of transition, has ball skills, can make an open three. His progression throughout this season will be big time for Purdue coming in March. Braden Smith was talking to P.J. Thompson today about throwing a lob in this game, and P.J. told him it better come before the 12-minute mark in the second half, and it did just that. Threw it up to Cam Heidi. Cam goes up to finish. One of the better finishers in the country. And Fletcher Lawyer doing the Queen's wave on the bench, too. Well, every chance to play for Cam Heidi the past couple years is precious with what he's went through with the foot issues. Yep. Now it might be chicken time. <laughs> Feels like mid-conference season in here. Mm. But instead of booing Iowa, Rutgers, and Indiana, we're booing no chicken in here tonight. And another one upstairs. This time it's Edie. This time it's coming from Cam Heidi. He's throwing it up to the big fella. Throw it down, big dog. <laughs> Coach Painter talked about it. If once you beat this press, you're going to have open threes and you're going to have dunks. And Purdue showing it. Edie. Ooh. He hadn't taken one all year. And I want him to take another one. Doesn't look bad. It's a good one. He knows what he just did. Purdue First he did this. Did a great job breaking the press. Cam Heidi throwing it up to the big fella. Robert McCray goes up to contest. He's just too small, young fella. Can... Uh, Okay, so so he's a good dunker. We know that, but we want we want to prove that he's a good three-point shooter again, right? Yes, we do. We want him to hit one. Run him a down screen. Come on, oh! Bread and butter, the dunks and the blocks. He's trailing here. They're not going to give it to him. Not going to give it to him. Yeah, pick chance. and pop. Come on, pick and pop. Good pass. That's what he does best. That is where his bread is butter. Just an amazing pass by Braden Smith. Coming off of that ball screen with pace, with confidence, and boys, and Zach Eaton doing what he should do, rolling right to the basket. Braden Smith with the missile right to the hands of Zach Eady, one of the best in the country at finishing through contact. Zach Bell can do nothing with the big fella at the rim. There was tension in the air on this three for Zach Eady. Brady Smith coming off the screen. Big crescendo as ZD took that three. A nice move for McCray to get back inside. I think he smiled for three possessions after that. Because he wants to shoot another one. Well, those are only worth two down there. Colvin, in and out, and rebound for Payne. And McCray speeding in, scoop, foul, headed to the free throw line. Oh, yeah, that, that look was just all across his face for, I don't know, two to three minutes after that. He's such a such a low maintenance star being around him a little bit. I mean, you've been around him quite a bit. But I mean, he'll he'll sit down and talk with anybody who walks into the shooter room. Oh, I mean, for sure, Zach Eady, like you said, a low maintenance superstar, just a good all-around dude. 
had a fundraiser on campus earlier this see earlier this year. Zach Eady volunteered his time to come and speak to everyone. And it's for some kids. Zach Eady, one of the better All-Americans that you'll come across off the floor. Just a high-caliber individual. So it's great, because then you get that side of him, and then he just punishes you <laughs> when it gets into this type of situation. Here he is. Kick out. Colvin. And the stroke. Looking good today. Said a couple. Not here, though. And I just love his ability to have the confidence to keep shooting the basketball. McCray kept the ball right on his hip. McCray is so good going right to be a lefty. He gets to that right side of the basketball floor, gets downhill, has athleticism to go up and change his shot to finish at the basket. He's going to be a problem in the Atlantic Sun. He's fifth in scoring right now. McCray is. Setting his feet with Morton out on him. Got it up. And put it down. That's tough. Oh, it's bouncing. You know, the guy that he might battle for the scoring title in the A-Sun with, familiar name in Indiana, Marion native, Jalen Blackman, yep. who is James Blackman Jr.'s younger brother. Well, Zach Heady has given fans across America a thrill for several years. He did with a three-point try today. Oh, yeah, my brother and sister both graduated from Indiana, so I would take visits up to campus all the time. I was in eighth grade being coached by James Blackman Sr. Ray McCullum Sr. would come to games at times. I went to Hoosier Hysteria. I would go to the league camps with Calvin Sampson at the time. Coach Cream when he came in, but it was always Purdue for me. The thing that changed for me when I came to Purdue on a visit, seeing Etwan Moore, Lewis Jackson, Juwan Johnson, and seeing how they interact with Coach Painter, that's what sold the deal for me and my family. And it's a good thing you did because then you became the Kevin Bacon of Purdue basketball. <laughs> if, if A.J. Hammonds didn't come here, then <laughs> the rest of the guys after him my, might not have come My here. own seven-foot theory that I, I like made it. up. <laughs> I don't know, you, you were pretty convicted in what you said. Oh, I believe it 100%, but I made it up. Coach Painter has not stamped that one. So, James Blackman Sr. coached you a little bit, Kona? Yep, I he, but, yep. but But you gotta, you got to tell the people what you just told me when we were in commercial. <laughs> oh, by watching the uh, clips. How, how he taught you basketball. He taught us basketball because he was good at basketball. He expected everyone to be around him to be good at basketball. So, if you weren't. He would talk to you. He would show you clips. He would show you how to get it done. Coach Blackman is a, is a savant in basketball, at Fort Wayne basketball history. Deshaun Thomas is high school coach, won a few state championships. He's a big time. And Colvin in and out. He's He's been right there with that outside shot today. And I just want him to keep shooting the open ones. Like Coach Painter said, shoot the open ones. Coach Mincy says it as well. You always shoot the goal shots. And taken away by Heidi. Yeah, it was an interesting way that, that Jordan Mincy, the Jacksonville head coach, put their shot selection. You know, you, you hear the, the green light, yellow light, red light. Yep. They, they do it by gold, silver, and bronze. I love it. I feel like it was it was Shaka Smart who first started saying neon green, right? Oh, yep, yep, yep. neon yep. green light. There's a three that goes down for McCray one more time. And that light for McCray is neon as well. Three-level score. We've seen him get to the basket, finish at the rim, finish through contact. We've seen a few floaters, and now he has made back-to-back three-pointers. He's got it going right now. A good lift on his jumper, too, huh? Yep. This will go down the other way. Well, hey, next Friday, the Boilers are right back here at Mackey. Final non-conference game. Eastern Kentucky is here. 7 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. But McCray, who has 20 points in this game for Jacksonville. The 41-42 the to 42 inch vertical. We were talking about how that shows up in his jump shot this week with Jordan Mincy. He said it reminds me of Russell Westbrook, yep. how high he gets on his jumper. No, he's smothered in the lane. Gillis away with it. Here okay. comes Kobe. Miles Kobe is just a special talent. Can make it from deep. Can finish at the rim with the best of them. 
This freshman just going to grow throughout the year. Future star, yeah? Oh, 100%. Just starting to figure it out. Here's first with the takeaway. Sitting having lunch here in town before the game and random people, as they do in West Lafayette, want to come up, talk basketball. and They, they were really intrigued by Colvin yeah. and, and what he can become by February. He's already pretty good now doing stuff like this. We see what he can do in transition. Going up, head at the basket, going to finish with the motion. And then you see this game. You see the pretty jump shot from deep. Well, you have that rare combination of athleticism plus the touch from three. You are a special prospect. He's going to figure it out. He's going to get bigger and stronger. I understand what Coach Painter wants from him. But this is an all Big Ten NBA caliber player we're watching. Good. Yeah, first, couldn't keep it on the floor. So it was, it was a quick exchange before this game, but but do you think that's kind of fan base wide? He's a guy that the fan base is most intrigued by. Oh yeah, I think they're most excited by Miles Colvin. He's a freshman. He's he's young. You look at his father played here, played football, was a sensational superstar. His sister is an All American on the volleyball floor. So you know the athletic pedigree is there. It's just all about watching him grow. His athletic ability is new for Purdue. They don't normally get athletes of Miles Colvin's pedigree, and it's exciting to have him on campus. 22 for McCray for the Dolphins. And McCray says, my bad, my bad. Don't want to delay the game. The, the recruiting firm of Shondell and Painter going strong with Raven Colvin playing volleyball. Yep. And Dave Shondell, the great head volleyball coach here at Purdue. It's always a good sign if your kids want to follow your footsteps or if you, as a parent, you feel comfortable sending your kids to the school you went to. First is upstairs to slam it. It's great ball movement through the zone for Purdue. Whipping the basketball around, no dribbles, getting right to the middle of the floor and finding Kayla first for the finish. And that will send us to break. Well, Miles Colvin hitting threes, throwing it down in front of Rosie. Show, we'll take you through this doubleheader back in our Chicago studios. I liked what Coach Weber had to say about the, the Purdue guards. He called them spunky. <laughs> there is nothing more that I enjoy better than going to big to the stu Chicago studios and spending time with Coach Weber. I call it two nights a week I get to go to the Bruce Weber School of Basketball. We, we talk about Purdue history, college basketball. It is a joy to be around Coach Weber. It's off McCray and out of bounds. You guys had a, a good battle I enjoyed watching out of the studio a couple weeks ago. You were talking about when you played against Kansas State. <laughs> yep. You guys played zone in that game. We did. And Purdue fans, they love to get on Coach Painter, play a zone, play a zone. Why don't we 2-3? But we actually tried it. Going into my junior season, Coach Painter thought we were so bad defensively. He brought in a zone coach to teach us how to play it, and we were still bad. Went out and played Kansas State and Maui. They blew us out. Marcus Foster hit us for 20, and we never played that zone again. Yeah, it, was, it was fun hearing you two spar about that. <laughs> you know, Purdue closing in on 80 points again. They have been a machine offensively, especially lately. Jones breaks it away. You know, he stops and starts and changes gears so quickly. Yep. And Kaufman Ren is fouled. And you see on that last possession, McCray has got it going. McCray is heated up. He's getting buckets at this point. Coach Painter checks his defensive stopper into the game. Lance Jones puts him on McCray, comes away with the steal. That's who Lance Jones is for Purdue. He's their defensive stopper. Whoever has it going, they're going to put him on him and expect him to shut him down. A couple plays in this game for Lance Jones. There we go. Oh, that's that's one to save. One to remember the play that he had wrapping around the big man that was up at the post in the first half of the dunk. When when you see him come up the floor and he's got a guy in his face, it's almost like he's going first through fifth gear and just kind of gear changing yep. every step he's taking. He's just a heady player. He understands angles. He understands pace. A burst of speed, how to slow down in transition. He just gets basketball at a high level, a high basketball IQ. 
the pass. I black. black in for Payne off the fake. And couldn't make it a three-point try. Instead, he'll settle for two. Well, Stefan Payne, he's a guy that came home this year. He was at Incarnate Word. Came home to Jacksonville, where he's from. And he'll try to avoid chicken time. And he's in the safe zone. But games like this, playing for Jordan Mincy, a chance for him to rep his hometown and yep. let the country know it's it's not just Duval. It's not just <laughs> it's not just the Jaguars. Yep. In his, in his home county and in his home city. And you hear Coach Bensey talk about wanting to recruit the Jacksonville area more and taking control of that area because there's good high school basketball in Florida, especially in Jacksonville. 80 points for a sixth straight game for Purdue on that Jones three. And then Nye Black has to deal with Jones still. Where do you think the landing spot's going to be points-wise when we get into Big Ten play for Purdue? I think Purdue could be up in the 70s and the 80s. Oh, oh, oh. Reaching behind him. Great focus, great finish from Cam Heidi. The athleticism, allowing him to hang in the rim and see, it, we'll see that one through. Showtime. He wants some more. Dolphins, Heidi Twyker. Probably remembered Heidi as the guy that dunked in pregame warnings. Yep. That was, that was kind of his thing. He's proven to be much more than that in his first four-year playing. Yes, he is. And I actually talked to Cam Heidi's high school coach a couple weeks ago, and he said this is who Cam Heidi is. This is who they expect him to be, an athlete, a finisher in transition, a guy that can make open shots. But I saw a guy defensively who guard the one through the three, and we've seen that play out so far. Will Berg and Brian Waddell into the game for the first time for the Boilers. The first, working with the right, short. Berg is there, and he goes to the free throw line. A reminder coming up next. Really aware in Indiana, they play North Alabama right here on Big Ten Network. Their final game before Christmas. After the survival the other night, how much impact do you think that has on, say, a Purdue when they see that Indiana had the scare the other night with Purdue playing a, a mid-major team in Jacksonville today? I think it shows you there's good players everywhere. I mean, players can show up on any given night. You've seen Purdue play Moorhead. We've seen other teams in the Big Ten play Moorhead and dominate them. And you can tell Indiana didn't play with that purpose. They expected just to win that game. But for Purdue, you understand that this game is business as usual. And I hear Coach Painter talking to the guys before the game. Play with the purpose. Approach this game like you approach playing Alabama or you're playing Arizona. And I think that's what the guys came out and did. You look at the first five minutes of this second half, Jacksonville only scores two points. I think this year's Purdue team has a focus. No, they haven't messed around. No, it's no time to. You know, Donovan Rivers, you probably could hear him being walked off the floor. He just fouled out. But, Connor, that's how you tell the telltale of a good team. Good teams, they wake up and they get ready and prepared to play anybody. It doesn't matter who comes in that gym. They're going to go hard every single game with the same intensity and the same work ethic. Indiana didn't have that the other night, but I'm sure Coach Wilson got that figured out over the last couple of days. Sabino is blocked. So, Purdue uh, against teams from one bid leagues this year. Like we said, they have not messed around 30-plus point wins in all of them so far. You're supposed to win the ones you're supposed to win. You're supposed to protect home. Purdue is doing a great job at taking care of business and understand the season they have in front of them. And then Night Black is fouled. You know, we were having a really interesting conversation today. I asked you, you know, when, when you have some mid-major teams, do you think NCAA tournaments of the past are on the mind of Purdue, or is it more short-term focus than that? 
I think this year's team has a short-term purpose. I think there's, if there's a loss that they're thinking about, it's that Northwestern game, and it's how those guards really tore them up and tore them to pieces. If there's one thing that you take away from the FDU game when you go up against a mid-major, it is a guy like a Robert McCray or a Nye Black keeping that basketball in front of you if you're Braden Smith or if you're Fletcher Lawyer accepting that charge. So when you do get against a 15 seed or a 16 seed in the tournament, you're used to keeping those quick, smaller guards in front of you off the bounce. And the technical foul on Marcus Nyblack, by the way. So Waddell shooting the text. <laughs> Be a moment that Jacksonville looks back to. They've been working with Marcus Nyblack on controlling his emotions. He cares so much, but it's the old uh, let's play with emotion, but not be emotional. Yep, you cannot jump over the fight. Coach Painter used to have a saying, don't get emotionally drunk. Understand who you are, understand the moment, but play basketball the right way. I love Nye Black and his spirit. Rather, he's up 20, down 20, he's going to be a feisty competitor, but it's all about holding that in. So this here was beyond the, the point of emotional sobriety from Nye Black. <laughs> Can't say that. No. That started with a uh, farm animal and ended <laughs> in a four-letter word. And that's the thing. You understand. You got the call. So understand. You got the call. You're going to the free throw line. Let that be enough. Let your game do the talking. There's no need to chirp to the refs at this point in the game. Uh, Jalen Griffith getting some run here for Jacksonville. A run I'm sure he will never forget. Playing at Mackey. And Waddell got clubbed. So Waddell to the line for a couple more on the double bonus. As much as you say, Matt Painter is always coaching. These fans are always fanning. Yes, they are. <laughs> after, after Waddell got fouled, the fan right behind us went, all right, you got there again, now make them. <laughs> One thing Coach Painter always should tell us is that our fans know basketball. They want you to play hard. They want you to play the right way, play together as a team, defend at a high level, and they'll cheer for you. But you got to love it. A good pipeline of Carmel guys coming to this Purdue program. Ryan Klein comes to mind. Waddell now. Waddell with the block. tight space and Sabino's away with it up ahead and a slam for Zach Bell coach Mincy called Zach Bell one of his better athletes on the team and I think we just saw that went up to finish over Ethan Morris now they missed him he returned to the lineup their last game he was out for several weeks Berg pays it back that was a really good feed from Kayla first taking that little baby dribble to the right to get the defense to attach to him and then filing the big fella at the rim, Will Berg, for the easy finish. So 90 points for Purdue. Their last six games, they've gone 87 plus in all. You got to go back to the the Rick Mount days, Lebanon's finest. Hey! And that to it with Colvin. Miles Colvin is chirping a little bit. You got to love when the freshman is out there talking a little bit, mixing it up. Just don't get what you said Matt Painter told you not to get emotionally. <laughs> That'll get you a technical. Yes, it will. Three for Bell. Short first rebound. So six straight games, 87 plus for Purdue. One of their final four teams was the last to do that. And Berg is there for another flush. team is just so versatile they're so deep they can beat you up on the glass they make nine threes they get to the free throw line 24 times this is a just a deep team that can beat you in a lot of different ways that's why they, why they are the best team in the country Bell leaves it off through it looks mad at the rim Ooh. So hold on now hold on now talked about how Colvin was talking a little bit before 
Him and Pruitt get separated, and we will step aside. 95. You know, Coach Weber made a, a good point there that the guards that were massive for Purdue last Saturday, Lawyer and Smith, eight combined points in this game. And it's just like we talked about all game long. It speaks to the depth of Purdue. This game, you got Jones and Crawford Wren stepping up big time. Chicken. <laughs> Chicken. I love this. Mm. You're down 40, you're on the road, and you get booed when you make a free throw. That is tough living. We have had one foot in the coop <laughs> three times today. Good deep. Really good defense. Jalen Griffith. Waddell? No. And Sabino did not secure it. And a third dunk for Wilbur. And that play was made by Cam Heidi. Cam Heidi did a great job of coming to relieve pressure off of Chase Martin. Got the basketball, a great kick out, and he got his hands on that offensive rebound and tipped it to Wilbur. That's out of bounds going back to Chase Martin and Purdue. And Heidi doing some acrobatic things today around the room. I still. And, and trying to figure out how did he not get rim stuffed on that one he reached back for. Yep. That was a great finish. I figure his day is done. Sam King comes in for him. So Berg, Barrett. We got Martin running the point. Driving kick. And a three is short. Right back to him. And a foul. Send Sam King to the free throw line. So, I think a lot of people know Purdue has a big team, but that's not what I mean. They, they have a large team as far as size. Right. Uh, height, I mean. But they also have just a massively long bench. They carry, what, 17, 18 guys? <laughs> you look at their bench, and there's one guy I look over there, and I see him sitting next to Coach Painter. It's P.J. Thompson. I play with P.J. He's on the staff now. And when I watch Brandon Smith come off of these ball screens, it is P.J. Thompson all over again. The reads he's making, the confidence he has. I talked to P.J. a bunch before the game. He's telling Brandon Smith before every game, you are the best point guard in the country. Play like it. Be aggressive. The ball is in your hands. And you can see the confidence just oozing through Brandon Smith. Martin trying to get in the book. No. Rebound for Tito Dang. His, uh, bio, his bio describes him as a funny guy. Did you see that? I did. I thought that was very interesting. I want to hear a joke. Make me laugh. Our director, Andrew Blaustein, agrees. Good cut. Good pass. Oh, hey! Good pass, Carson Bear. King, not here. Sabino working the two-on-one by himself, and he carves it off the glass and in. And Sabino is still playing. Purdue will dribble it out on what will be a historic win as far as the all-time Big Ten coaching leaderboard. Matt Painter passes Lou Henson, a guy who he used to go to camps with and play for at camp, just moved up to fourth all-time in Big Ten wins. That'll do it from us at Mackey Arena. Purdue drops 100, beating Jacksonville and winning their fourth straight game. They'll